Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Silver River Museum. My name is Erin, and I'm a teacher out at Silver River Museum. Who's ready to come on a field trip? Raise your hand. All right, and I don't actually see any video, so I'm just gonna have to guess who has their hand up or not, but raise your hand if you have never gone to a museum. This will be your first field trip to a museum. Raise your hand. All right. I think there were probably a lot of hands raised in those classrooms. And I'm so glad you get to join us today for this virtual museum field trip. Not only are you going to get to see an art museum today, but you're also going to get to see a history museum right here at Silver River. And I have two very special guests that are gonna lead us on this museum visit. And so first, I wanna introduce you guys, and let me add a spotlight here, to Miss Hollis from the Appleton Museum of Art right here in Ocala, Florida. And she's gonna share with us just a little bit more about what a museum is. Hi guys, I'm so thrilled to join you all this afternoon and thanks to the Silver River Museum for inviting me. So I work at this beautiful building here and that is the Appleton Museum of Art. It's about a mile away from the Silver River Museum on Silver Springs Boulevard. Now our museum was founded by a man named Mr. Appleton. That's why it's called the Appleton Museum of Art. And Mr. Appleton was a collector and he liked to collect art. Now, the type of museums that you have out there, they all depend on the type of objects that they collect. So what do you think an art museum has? Pictures and paintings? and maybe even some sculpture or drawings. Yes, that's what art museums have because we collect art. We say art is a record of human creativity and we like to display it and it allows us to learn more about the time period as well as it's just simply beautiful often. Now, think about a natural history museum. What kind of objects are they gonna have? maybe bones. Some places have like dinosaur bones or maybe artifacts. A history museum might have like historical documents and a science center might have exhibits that allow you to uh, explore different scientific concepts or children's museums allow you to play as you're learning. So all types of museums, we collect objects and depending on what kind of museum it is, that'll depend on the type of objects that we have. Now, do you all collect anything? Does anybody collect rocks? I know there are lots of cool rocks around here in Ocala that you can collect. How about shoes or Pokemon? There are all sorts of things. And again, museums start from a collection. And Mr. Appleton had so much art at home that he needed a place to put it. And that's how we get the Appleton Museum of Art. And that's how museums come about. Thank you, Hollis. So I want to take a minute and introduce you to Mr. Scott Mitchell, and he is from the Silver River Museum, and he is going to tell us about history museums. Okay, thank you, Erin. And Ms. Hollis, that is fascinating, the story about how Mr. Appleton's art collection got so big he needed a whole new museum to keep everything. And so the Appleton has artwork. Well, the Silver River Museum has things like bones and fossils and, and old bottles and Indian spear points that were left behind by people who used to live in Florida. Can you guys think of any groups of people that used to live in Florida long ago that are no longer here? Think about some people who might have been in Florida a long time ago. Maybe Indians, 
or perhaps Spanish explorers, those would be good answers. So we have things that those people left behind in, in a history museum. And in the Silver River Museum, when you first walk into the front room of the museum, you can see on your screen, if you look around, you'll see some of the things in the front room of the museum. So look closely, tell me what you see. Do you see a giant saber tooth cat or maybe a shark jaw hanging from the ceiling? And as the camera comes around, there's something really big right in the center of the room. It's not a dinosaur skeleton. Some people think it is. What kind of skeleton do you think it is? It has tusks, kind of like an elephant. What could that be? If you guessed a mammoth from the Ice Age, you guessed right. That's a skeleton from an Ice Age mammoth. Now, if you look in some of the other rooms of the museum, you will see other things that are not quite as old. So in this room, we have all kinds of information and things left behind by Indians who made dugout canoes. A canoe is a type of boat. What would you need a canoe for in the old days in Florida? Here's a clue. They didn't have cars or roads. So what do you think they did with canoes? They would travel around in them, that's right. If you wanted to go on a long trip, you could put all of your friends and all the stuff you were going to bring into a canoe and go down a long river to get to a different place. Now, if we go into another room in the museum, you will see things that Spanish explorers left behind. There is an old church bell from an old Spanish church that was built down along the Ocklawaha River right here in Marion County. And as the camera goes around a little bit further, you'll actually see cannons. These cannons are from Spanish ships from the old days. And these were actually found by divers from old Spanish shipwrecks. There's a big cannon and an anchor in the background. What do you think the cannons were for? Why did those ships need cannons? They were bringing gold and silver back to Spain from Florida and they had those cannons, which are like big guns on the ships for protection to scare away bad people. So those are some of the history items that you might see in a museum. Here behind me in this interesting case, we have old objects that have to do with making pictures, photographs, and movies at Silver Springs. And there was a man named Bruce Mozart who would build these special boxes that he could put his camera inside this waterproof box. And what do you think he did with it? He would take it under the water. Why would you want to take a camera underwater? You would have to make a special box to keep it dry. And you would have to get some scuba gear where you could breathe underwater and you would take your camera underwater. But what would you do? You would take underwater photographs. And Miss Hollis is actually going to talk to us about one of these underwater photographs that Mr. Mozart took here at Silver Springs. We'll show you a couple of things before we go back to Hollis. And this movie camera, this big dark camera on the far side of the exhibit. That's an old fashioned camera. Modern cameras and even cell phones can take really great photographs or videos. But back in the old days, they had these big things that would be used to take pictures and videos. So those are the kind of things that Mr. Mozart would build special boxes for. If we go up to the photograph, there is a picture of Bruce Mozart all the way on the left. You see a scuba diver holding a special box. He's underwater and he is taking photographs underwater with his special waterproof camera box. So these are some of the artifacts we have from the old days of photography at Silver Springs. So Miss Hollis, if you would like to tell us a little bit about your picture you have that Mr. Mozart took or maybe even a little bit more about um, the art that Mr. Mozart made in the Appleton Museum. We are curious. Wonderful. Before we get to that, I just wanted to show you some images 
of the Appleton Museum of Art. Now this is our African gallery uh, that you are looking at right now. And then this is our Asian gallery. And here we have a kimono, a ceremonial robe from Japan. Here we have some paintings that are upstairs. This is one of our most famous paintings called the shepherdess. Does anybody have a guess as to what kind of animals the shepherdess looks after? If you said sheep, you were right. And then here are some more modern or contemporary recent art. And then we did have an exhibit in the education wing on Bruce Moser. And this is just an overview of what that exhibit looked like. And here is one of my favorite photos. Now looking at this, it's a black and white photo. It looks like there's somebody leaping over a hurdle like you would have maybe at a track or field event. What's special about this photo? Can anybody guess? If you said it was underwater, you are right. So Bruce took this photo underwater. And one of the things that gives it away is you can see some people standing in the background in their bathing suits. Bruce Moser was famous for these beautiful underwater photos that made you think that they were taken up on land. Now, here's another one. Here's somebody posing with turtles. And guess what? When we have this exhibit up, this lady right here is the lady in this photo. That was taken over 60 years ago. And she told me a little bit more about the experience of posing underwater. Now, because people are standing in the water here, we know that it's shallow. So there's not a big area to go before you reach the surface. And that makes it easier for the people posing underwater to reach the surface and breathe but they were taught by Bruce Moser and the other divers there how to hold their breath for a couple minutes because they needed to be able to hold it and be still for Bruce to get the camera in the right position and wait for the photo to be taken. They could also take photos deeper underwater and they would use things like the scuba apparatus that you learned about or they'd have air hoses for the divers. Now, one thing I like in this one is the texture and also that the water ripples up at the top almost look like they're clouds. And that even though this is seagrass, you might at first think it was just regular grass. The thing that really gives away that this is underwater are those people standing in the background. Now, does anybody have any questions? You can ask in the chat. If not, I'll ask Scott a question. Do you, um, so Mr. Scott, do you like working in a museum? I do. I like working at the Silver River Museum because of two reasons. First of all, I think old stuff left behind is really interesting, like Indian spear points and old bottles and old cameras. I like old stuff, so it's interesting. But lots of people come to the museum and I get to meet new people all the time. So that's what I like about working at the Silver River. What about you? Do you like working at the Appleton? I love working at the Appleton because I'm always learning new stuff. I mentioned different kinds of museums and I've worked in a whole variety of them from natural history to children's museum to art museum. And I really like them all. Though I went to school and I studied art history. So it makes sense that I'm working in an art museum. My, my parents took me to museums all of the time. I grew up in Gainesville, so I would go to the Florida Museum of Natural History and to the Harn Museum of Art. 
Now, my favorite room at the old, old Florida Museum of Natural History was a room filled with drawers and you'd open a drawer and you never knew what was there. And it was their collection storage. And it had Latin names written on the outside. And I could have spent hours in that room. I know I did spend hours discovering what was there. And I never knew, was it going to be a tarantula or a bird? or arrowheads. It was always a discovery and surprise. And I think it's the discovery that I really like about museums. Another really neat thing about museums is that lots of big cities and towns have museums and some places have more than one museum and each museum is a little different. So you could go to a museum that has race cars or you could go to a museum that has artwork or dinosaur fossils or Indian artifacts. There's all kinds of museums out there. So wherever you go on vacation or if you're traveling, you can always find a museum to learn new things. All right, so teachers, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a minute and we're gonna be quiet so that you can talk to your students and find out what their questions are. And if you will type them in chat and please also share with us where you're from and how many students are in, in with you, that would be helpful. All right, and as we start to see questions come up in chat, we will ask them of Ms. Hollis or Mr. Scott. All right, Ms. Velez's class from Maplewood Elementary wants to know, what school did you go to to become an art or a history person? Hollis, would you like to start? I went to college. I went to Agnes Scott College in Atlanta, Georgia. And then I went to graduate school in Waco, Texas at Baylor University. And I studied museums. And I went to college too. I went to the University of Florida and studied archeology. span That is digging up things in the ground to learn about past cultures. And then I also went to graduate school, which is just more college at the University of South Florida in Tampa where I study archeology span again. All right, it looks like Ms. Pruitt's class has a number of questions. Let's start with the first one. Why did the lady in the picture go underwater for the picture? That's a great question. So Bruce asked for those models to pose underwater for him. And guess what? A lot of them worked at the Silver Springs. Bruce was the official photographer there, and often the people that he got to pose in the photos were people who already had jobs there. So a lot of them were trained to go underwater, and that made it easier for him. And Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but underwater photography was kind of a new and exciting thing, right? It was brand new back in the 50s and maybe even the 60s, they didn't have very many underwater cameras. So when Bruce Mozart built that box to put the camera in that waterproof box to take it underwater, that was brand new technology. So it was really kind of a cool new idea. And they were trying to show everybody how beautiful Silver Springs was to get more people to come to Silver Springs and it worked. All right, Scott, this question's for you. Also from Ms. Pruitt's class, how did the items in the History Museum get there? Oh, that's a great question. A couple of different ways. Sometimes people who have these things 
will want them to be in a museum like Mr. Appleton with his artwork, and they will give those objects to a museum. So some of the pieces we have here, people gave them to us. Um, a few pieces that are here, the museum actually bought with money. And then the third way that they can then end up here is if a family has something and they want to display it in the museum, but they're not ready to give it away, sometimes they will let us borrow it to put it in the museum. All right, the next question I think is for you again, Scott, and I might have to screen share to help answer this. Okay. Miss Velez's class from Maplewood wants to know, how did you get the bones from dinos? So let me screen share those bones again. Okay, that's a great question. So it's a two part question. Let's wait for uh, Miss Erin to get to the Hold room on, where we have the bones. I'll just talk about that a little bit to start with. We'll want to pan around. So are we talking about this, I think? Okay, so <clears throat> this was a piece that the museum bought from another museum. So that's how we got it. And they came in little pieces and we had a, a person put it together like a big puzzle here in the museum. So that's how it came here, but it's not a dinosaur. It is a mammoth from the ice age. So, to answer the question, we got this from another museum, but it's a not a it's not a dinosaur. It's a mammoth from the Ice Age. All right, let's see what else we have. So I think it's Miss Balkin's class. I don't see the whole name, but Isabella wants to know if any of the cameras still work. Boy, I'm not sure. I think probably some of them do, because. If you were to clean them up and put the right kind of film in those cameras, I bet some of them still do work. Okay, so while we're waiting for more questions to come in, uh, Hollis, can you tell us about how students could come and see the Appleton Museum of Art in person? So there is an admission cost to come to the Appleton Museum of Art, but this Saturday is our free first Saturday. And that means you can bring your entire uh, family and neighborhood and visit the museum for free. And that is the first Saturday of every month. And that'll continue in October, November, and December. So we're super excited about that. So if you're inspired, come visit this Saturday. We have, we have a room called the Art Space, which is about two classrooms big with different stations where you can make art or play with Legos or build out a light table and learn more about artists as well that we have at the Appleton Museum of Art. All right, and Scott, how about the Silver River Museum? How can students come? If you want to see the Silver River Museum, you can also come out on the weekends. The museum is open every Saturday and Sunday and it's a couple of dollars to get in, but we do have a big festival in November called Ocali Country Days. And on that weekend, students will be able to get in for free. All right, we have another question and it's from Emma. And Emma wants to know how long the Silver River Museum has been around. The Silver River Museum has been around for 30 years. It started in 1991. So this is our 30th birthday. And Hollis, how about the Appleton? It actually opened in uh, 1987, so it's not too much older than uh, the Silver River Museum, but Mr. Appleton worked for a couple of years of building his collection, and then he had to build the museum. So he probably was working on it for at least five years before the museum opened to the public. Okay, well, I don't see any more questions coming in. Do either of you want to give us some, some final words before we say goodbye? Ms. Hollis, do you want to go first? I would say come and visit museums. Museums are a great place to learn and actually see the objects that you're learning about in school. It's different when you see the actual thing in person versus just seeing a photograph. And sometimes it leads to those discovery moments where everything sort of makes sense or you understand what your teacher was telling you. Now, when you actually see the objects in person. I would agree. And I was going to say the same thing. I would say 
when you're out and about. If you see a museum and you have time, go see what's inside. They're fascinating places and you can always learn something because each museum is a little different. Well, we have a few more questions that have come in and we have a few more minutes. So I think we should answer them. Noah wants to know how long is the Silver River, which the museum is named after? The Silver River is almost six miles long. So that's pretty long, but it winds through the Silver Springs State Park. So if you were going down the Silver River in a canoe, it would seem a little bit longer because it's windy. And then Hollis, this question is for you from Miss Pruitt's class. How many paintings are in the museum? Oh my goodness. We just got a lot more art in the museum. And I think we are at about 20,000 artworks at the museum, about 20,000 artworks. And the majority of those are a good couple thousand are prints. So a printmaking is like a fancy way of, of copying something. Artwork, it's like a, a giant stamp that you repeat that process over and over. So we have thousands of prints. And we even went through some of them just to make sure we didn't have duplicates of prints. And we still have thousands of them. But we have everything, not just paintings, but sculptures from very tiny things to paintings that take up the whole wall to um, three-dimensional pieces that you could walk around and aren't flat. So all different types of artwork. We have clothing or fabric that you can hang on the wall. Those are textiles. We even have um, samurai swords, just all sorts of different types of artwork that you can find. All right, well, a big thank you to Hollis at the Appleton Museum of Art and Scott at the Silver River Museum. And um, friends, I hope you will come visit a museum soon. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.